Appendix D. The Port of Londaya. It was told in Concerning Galadriel and Celeborn that in the war against Sauron in Eriador, at the end of the seventeenth century of the Second Age, the Numenorean admiral Kiriator put a strong force ashore at the mouth of the Guathlo, Graveflood, where there was a small Numenorean harbour. This seems to be the first reference to that port, of which a good deal is told in later writings. The fullest account is in the philological essay concerning the names of rivers, which has already been cited in connection with the legend of Amroth and Nimrodel. In this essay, the name Guathlo is discussed as follows. The river Guathlo is translated Grey Flood, but Guath is a Sindarin word for shadow in the sense of dim light owing to cloud or mist or in deep valleys. This does not seem to fit the geography. The wide lands divided by the Guathlo into the regions called by the Numenorians Minhiriath, between the rivers Baranduin and Guathlo, and Enedwaith, middle folk, were mainly plains, open and mountainless. At the point of the confluence of Glanduin and Mithaethel, Horwell, the land was almost flat, and the waters became sluggish and tended to spread into Fenland. The Glanduin, border river, flowed down from the misty mountains south of Moria to join the Mithaethel above Thorbad. On the original map to the Lord of the Rings, the name was not marked. It only occurs once in the book, in Appendix A. It seems that in 1969, my father communicated to Miss Pauline Baines certain additional names for inclusion in her decorated map of Middle-earth. Ed Helond, as already discussed, Andrast, Druwaith Ayawa, Old Puko Land, Lond Dyer, Ruins, Erin Vaughan, River Adorn, Swanfleet, and River Clan Duin. The last three of these names were then written into the original map that accompanies the book, but why this was done I have been unable to discover, and while River Adorn is correctly placed, Swanfleet and, incorrectly spelled, River Glandin are blunderingly placed against the upper course of the Ison. The correct interpretation of the relation between the names Glanduin and Swanfleet is given shortly. But some hundred miles below Tharbad, the slope increased. The Guathlo, however, never became swift, and ships of smaller draught could without difficulty sail or be rowed as far as Tharbad. The origin of the name Guathlo must be sought in history. In the time of the War of the Ring, the lands were still in places well wooded, especially in Minhiriath and in the southeast of Enedwaith but most of the plains were grasslands. Since the great plague of the year 1636 of the Third Age, Minhiriath had been almost entirely deserted, though a few secretive hunter-folk lived in the woods. In Enedwaith, the remnants of the Dunlendings lived in the east in the foothills of the Misty Mountains, and a fairly numerous but barbarous fisher-folk dwelt between the mouths of the Guathlo and the Angren, Eisen. But in the earlier days, at the time of the first explorations of the Numenorians, the situation was quite different. Minhiriath and Enedwaith were occupied by vast and almost continuous forests, except in the central region of the Great Fens. The changes that followed were largely due to the operations of Tar Aldarion, the Mariner King, who formed a friendship and alliance with Gilgalad. Aldarion had a great hunger for timber desiring to make Numenor into a great naval power. His felling of trees in Numenor had caused great dissensions. In voyages down the coasts he saw with wonder the great forests, and he chose the estuary of the Guathlo for the site of a new haven entirely under Numenorian control. Gondor, of course, did not yet exist. There he began great works that continued to be extended after his days, this entry into Eriador later proved of great importance in the war against Sauron, Second Age 1693 to 1701. But it was in origin a timber port and shipbuilding harbour. The native people were fairly numerous and warlike, 
but they were forest dwellers, scattered communities without central leadership. They were in awe of the Numenorians, but they did not become hostile until the tree felling became devastating. Then they attacked and ambushed the Numenorians when they could, and the Numenorians treated them as enemies and became ruthless in their fellings, giving no thought to husbandry or replanting. The fellings had at first been along both banks of the Guathlo, and timber had been floated down to the haven, Lond Dyer. But now the Numenorians drove great tracks and roads into the forests northwards and southwards from the Guathlo, and the native folk that survived fled from Minhiriath into the dark woods of the great cape of Erin Vaughan, south of the mouth of the Baron Duin, which they dared not cross, even if they could, for fear of the elven folk. From Enedwaith they took refuge in the eastern mountains where afterwards was Dunland. They did not cross the Eisen, nor take refuge in the great promontory between Eisen and Lefnui that formed the north arm of the Bay of Belfalas, because of the Pukel men. For the continuation of this passage, refer to the Druidine. The devastation wrought by the Numenorians was incalculable. For long years these lands were their chief source of timber, not only for their shipyards at Lond Dyer and elsewhere, but also for Numenor itself. Shiploads innumerable passed west over the sea. The denuding of the lands was increased during the war in Eriador, for the exiled natives welcomed Sauron and hoped for his victory over the men of the sea. Sauron knew of the importance to his enemies of the great haven and its shipyards, and he used these haters of Numenor as spies and guides for his raiders. He had not enough force to spare for any assault upon the forts at the haven or along the banks of the Guathlo. But his raiders made much havoc on the fringe of the forests, setting fire in the woods and burning many of the great wood stores of the Numenorians. When Sauron was at last defeated and driven east out of Eriador, most of the old forests had been destroyed. The Guathlo flowed through a land that was far and wide on either bank a desert, treeless but untilled. That was not so when it first received its name from the hardy explorers of Tar Aldarion's ship who ventured to pass up the river in small boats. As soon as the seaward region of salt airs and great winds was passed, the forest drew down to the river banks, and wide though the waters were, the huge trees cast great shadows on the river, under which the boats of the adventurers crept silently up into the unknown land. So the first name they gave to it was River of Shadow, Guath Kir, Guathir. But later they penetrated northward as far as the beginning of the great Fenlands, though it was still long before they had the need or sufficient men to undertake the great works of drainage and dike building that made a great port on the site where Tharbad stood in the days of the two kingdoms. The Sindarin word that they used for the Fenland was Lo, earlier Loga from a stem log meaning wet, soaked, swampy. And they thought at first that it was the source of the forest river, not yet knowing that the myth Athel that came down out of the mountains in the north, and gathering the waters of the Bruinen, Loudwater, and Glanduin, poured flood waters into the plain. The name Guathir was thus changed to Guathlo, the shadowy river from the fens. The Guathlo was one of the few geographical names that became generally known to others than mariners in Numenor, and received an Adonaic translation. This was Agathurush. The history of Londaya and Tharbad is also mentioned in this same essay, in a discussion of the name Glanduin. Glanduin means border river. It was the name first given in the Second Age since the river was the southern boundary of Eregion, beyond which pre-Numenorian and generally unfriendly peoples lived, such as the ancestors of the Dunlendings. Later it, with the Guathlo formed by its confluence with the Mythethel, formed the southern boundary of the North Kingdom. The land beyond, between the Guathlo and the Eisen, Seer Angren, was called Enedwaith, Middle Folk, 
it belonged to neither kingdom and received no permanent settlements of men of Numenorean origin. But the great north-south road, which was the chief route of communication between the two kingdoms except by sea, ran through it from Tharbad to the fords of Isen, Ethride Engrin. Before the decay of the North Kingdom and the disasters that befell Gondor, indeed until the coming of the Great Plague in Third Age 1636, both kingdoms shared an interest in this region, and together built and maintained the Bridge of Tharbad and the long causeways that carried the road to it on either side of the Gwathlo and Mithaethel, across the fens in the plains of Minhiriath and Enedwaith. In the early days of the kingdom, the most expeditious route from one to the other, except for great armaments, was found to be by sea to the ancient port at the head of the estuary of the Gwathlo, and so to the river port of Tharbad, and thence by the road. The ancient seaport and its great quays were ruinous, but with long labour a port capable of receiving seagoing vessels had been made at Tharbad, and a fort raised there on great earthworks on both sides of the river to guard the once famed bridge of Tharbad. The ancient port was one of the earliest ports of the Numenorians, begun by the renowned mariner king Tar Aldarion, and later enlarged and fortified. It was called Lond Dyer Eneth, the Great Middle Haven as being between Lindon in the north and Pelagia on the Anduin. A considerable garrison of soldiers, mariners and engineers had been kept there until the 17th century of the Third Age. But from then onwards the region fell quickly into decay, and long before the time of the Lord of the Rings had gone back into wild fenlands. When Boromir made his great journey from Gondor to Rivendell, the courage and hardihood required is not fully recognised in the narrative. The north-south road no longer existed, except for the crumbling remains of the causeways, by which a hazardous approach to Tharbad might be achieved, only to find ruins on dwindling mounds, and a dangerous ford formed by the ruins of the bridge, impassable if the river had not been there slow and shallow, but wide. If the name Glanduin was remembered at all, it would only be in Rivendell, and it would apply only to the upper course of the river where it still ran swiftly, soon to be lost in the plains and disappear in the fens, a network of swamps, pools and aits, where the only inhabitants were hosts of swans and many other water birds. If the river had any name, it was in the language of the Dunlendings. In the Return of the King, Book 6, Chapter 6, it is called the Swanfleet River, not River, simply as being the river that went down into Neen in Aelf, the waterlands of the swans. It was my father's intention to enter, in a revised map of the Lord of the Rings, Glanduin as the name of the upper course of the river, and to mark the fens as such with the name Neen in Aelf, or Swanfleet. In the event, his intention came to be misunderstood, for on Pauline Baines's map, the lower course is marked as R. Swanfleet, while on the map in the book, as noted earlier, the names are placed against the wrong river. It may be noted that Tharbad is referred to as a ruined town in The Fellowship of the Ring, Books 2, Chapter 3, and that Boromir in Lothlorien told that he had lost his horse at Tharbad. At the fording of the Grey Flood, Fellowship Book 2, Chapter 8. In the Tale of Years, the ruining and desertion of Tharbad is dated to the year 2912 of the Third Age, when great floods devastated Enedwaith and Minhiriath. From these discussions, it can be seen that the conception of the Numenorean harbour at the mouth of the Guathlo had been expanded since the time when, concerning Galadriel and Celeborn, was written from a small Numenorean harbour to Londaya, the Great Haven. It is, of course, the Vinya Londe, or New Haven of Aldarion and Erindis, though that name does not appear in the discussions just cited. It is said in Aldarion and Erindis that the works that Aldarion began again at Vinya Londe after he became king were never completed. 
This probably means no more than they were never completed by him, for the later history of Lon Dyer presupposes that the haven was at length restored, and made secure from the assaults of the sea, and, indeed, the same passage in Aldarian and Erindis goes on to say that Aldarian laid the foundation for the achievement of Tar Ministia long years after, in the first war with Sauron, and but for his works the fleets of Numenor could not have brought their power in time to the right place, as he foreswore. The statement in the discussion of Glanduin, above that the port was called Lon Dyer Enith, the Great Middle Haven, as being between the havens of Lindon in the north and Pelargir on the Anduin, must refer to a time long after the Numenorean intervention in the war against Sauron in Eriador. For, according to the Tale of Years, Pelargir was not built until the year 2350 of the Second Age, and became the chief haven of the faithful Numenoreans.